You're listening to Satellite Sisters. What's a Satellite Sister? The person you call when the best thing in your life happens or the worst. The person that gets you up, gets you going, and gets you through. And every once in a while, changes your mind. This podcast is part pep talk, part weekly check-in. Like grabbing coffee with a friend. Thanks for being here. Welcome to the Satellite Sisterhood. You are listening to Satellite Sisters. Thank you for being here today. We're glad you're here. I'm Leanne Dolan. I'm in Pasadena, California. I'm a podcaster. I'm a writer. I'm a producer. And I'm happy to be with my sisters today. Jewel? Hey, it's Julie Dolan. I'm in Dallas, Texas. I'm the eldest sister. I'm a podcaster. And just thrilled to be here today. (laughs) <laughs> so enthusiastic just, just yeah. trying something new there okay <laughs> love to hear it i'm liz dolan i'm in santa monica i am a marketer and a podcaster and i'm also very excited for our sense of adventure show leon that's right it's sense of adventure today it's the fourth part of our uncommon senses series so that informed our question of the week mm-hmm. and here it is girls Something you wouldn't do for any amount of money. What is something you would not do for any amount of money? Julie? Okay. Okay. Hot air balloon. Okay. Two <laughs> words there. Wicker <laughs> basket. Well, well who, who thought it was a good idea to go up 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 feet in a wicker basket? And don't even get me started on the balloon and the fire and the hot air. No, no, no. No, I'm... <laughs> Not, I know people think it's romantic. I no amount of money would get me in one of those things. Okay, uh, Liz, how about you? Right. Well, my answer is not nearly as spectacular as Julie's. I dug deep for this one, sisters. I thought for no amount of money would I become an ophthalmologist because oh, yeah. just, just looking into people's eyeballs, <laughs> just, it just just eyeballs give me the heebie-jeebies business. That's it. <laughs> No way. Can you okay. imagine having an ophthalmologist who got the heepy jeebies looking at eyeballs? I, know. I would be a very be... poor, very poor choice. <laughs> How about you, Leanne? Okay, I'm gonna say any vessel or vehicle that a billionaire has developed. Okay, I'm not going under the water in a sub. I'm not going up in space. I I don't want to sit in the back of a self-driving car. That's it. Those are not doing it. Oh, okay. All right. Not doing it. <laughs> Not doing it. All right. Today is our sense of adventure show. We can't wait to talk about this. Um, uh, this is from our book, Satellite Sisters Uncommon Senses. And we're spending the last five shows of 2023 reviewing the five uncommon senses. We've already talked about sense of connection, sense of self, sense of humor. Today is sense of adventure. And next week is sense of direction. Uh, on the show today, Julie, you'll have one of our moms, you know, classic lines, which has really been a touchstone for all of us, but particularly you. What did our mom used to say to us when we were trying something hard? Uh, You'll be fine, dear. You'll be fine. Okay. She had no knowledge about whether or not we would be fine or not fine, but that was her mantra. Uh, That's what she would say to everyone. You'll be fine, dear. Yeah, It's helpful. It's good. You're going to explain that. Uh Also, Liz, uh, we're doing a segment at the end, Adventures We'd Like to Have. So that's something people can think about. I can't think of anything you personally haven't done yet, Liz. So I'm curious. You feel (laughs) Julie, a lot of adventures. Yeah. I sort of have a TBD on this one for now, but I'm going to think it up by in time for the sense of direction show, Leanne. That's my goal. (laughs) So I'm setting a goal for myself on my next adventure. (laughs) There you go. And stay with us because we do have an important announcement. We're going to tell you what's happening with Satellite Sisters in 2024. But first, we'll start with the opening essay, Sense of Adventure. Now, in our book, Monica wrote this one, and she did a lovely job. It was all about the places she's lived and moving all over the place. Um, And we're just going to pull out some of the key pieces of that essay and how we developed our sense of direction. Remember, there are five Dolan girls and three Dolan boys. I think we've already established we lived in a home. There were rules but little oversight. Uh, Our our parents had big personalities and we always had someone we could go somewhere with when you have that many siblings in the family. So those were all key. I think we were just open to new adventures because our parents were relatively open to new adventures. You know, I don't think you wouldn't look at my dad and go, there's Mr. Outdoors. He was not. He was Mr. No, no. 
bad was Mr. Indoors? But <laughs> hey, go anywhere indoors. You want to go to the opera? You want to go to a museum? You want to go to a Broadway show? He'd stand on the sidelines of the New York City Marathon. He would just jump in the car and take his places. And I never once heard dad say, oh, we can't go because we'll never get parking. I mean, right. did you ever, mm-hmm. ever say no. that? No. no, no. Yeah. And our mom was more sort of outdoorsy. She and her twin sister taught themselves to ski when they were 40 so that they could take their get this 17 collective children ski. Okay. <laughs> Does that does that sound fun to you, mothers? Oh, does yeah. And pa- pack the lunch too, right? Don't forget that. Lady. Yeah. And we'd pile in that station wagon and we'd drive to Vermont and invariably the batteries would go dead on the car and mm-hmm. so someone would break a leg, but it didn't matter. Like she was packing that station wagon. We always had food with us and we go. And I think the combination of the two of them really set us up to be both independent and interdependent. You know, Uh, we had the skills Mm -hmm. to kind of go alone, but we could always take a sibling if we needed some guidance or some help or just somebody to to tag along. Now, one of the things our parents insisted we learn how to do was use public transportation, (laughs) which... Right. It's not clear. It's so fundamental. It was so (laughs) fundamental to our sense of independence because they were not going to take us anywhere. Right. (laughs) Yeah, that was it. Like if we could get there under our own scheme or if we steam, we just get there, be fine. And we lived outside of New York City along the eastern seaboard. So, you know, Amtrak was always there for us. And even around town, we took the the bus, you know, around town. Our parents did not drive us anywhere. So being we walked a lot too. I mean, we walked I did walked in we did Great walk a lot. Day. When I think about like getting to the train station, there was a lot of walking <laughs> yes. to that train station. <laughs> There's a reason I literally never get on a bike uh, because I had to bike everywhere as a child. I'm like, Resent- I'm over some it. resentment, I'm- childhood resentment. They re- okay. But, you know, learning how to rain, like read a map, train, you know, a train schedule, that was all very helpful in our sense of adventure. And I think we took that to go into the city. Like, I think mm-hmm. living outside of the city, New York definitely meant we weren't that intimidated by other cities in the world. Do you think that would yeah. be true? Yeah, I think right. that's true. I, I, I mean, I've told this story on the show before, but I took the train with my friend when I was in seventh grade to go to New York by ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I was yeah. I was the same age. Yeah. I mean, I was 12. Yeah. You know, that's uh that was that's a lot. So yeah, there are yeah. plenty of 12-year-olds who live in the city and it works fine for them. So yeah. I think there was no fear. <laughs> so we had sort of no fear in a good way, even though New York at the time was very uh dangerous. Uh we uh we we believed in public, you know, our we knew how to use public transportation. Our parents lit all to no oversight and they just let us do things. And then our mom also had the adage that good planning makes good fun. Mm-hmm. And I think we all became really good planners at how we were going to execute um, our exit, basically. Like, we got we to gotta get out of this house. <laughs> what, what are we doing? <laughs> so I think those all sort of fed into our sense of adventure. And certainly... You know, Julie, you've lived all over the world, Liz. You've traveled all over the world. You've all been to super exotic places. Me, not so much. But, you know, I did join a middle-aged ladies dance troupe, and that's pretty adventurous. I like to get yes, like, credit for that. Yes. Absolutely. Right, where the public can come see you dance. I think that's the adventurous part. <laughs> but last month, or a couple of weeks ago, I actually went to Spain for a long weekend. And it was a, a little bit unlike me because... um well, Spain is a long way to go from Los Angeles. I, mean, I was so it. shocked when I heard about this trip. I was like, where are you going, Leah? Yeah. You're doing what? My yeah. dear college friend, Andrew, has lived in Spain for 20 years. And for a variety of reasons, I have never been to see his house there. Now, I've seen him a lot in the U.S. We've run into each other. We've made plans. But I have not been to his home in Madrid, where he lives with his husband, Roger, and two kids. And our third college friend, he spurred us on a year ago. He said, we have to go. It's the 40th anniversary of our friendship. We met, you know, first day of school, freshman year at college. We need to all go to Madrid together. And it was one of those things we kept like putting off the dates and switching in. Of course, people have lives and, and deadlines and aging parents and things like that. But when we finally put it on the calendar, I'm like, OK, I guess I'm going to Spain. And it was a five day trip to Spain. Is it a long way to go to Spain from Los Angeles? Yes, it is. You guys. I'm not going to get 
I'm not going to keep I mean, you. there is something to just putting it on the calendar because that, totally. you know, it, totally. that, that sets the day, you know, you're, you know, you're not just discussing it anymore. Right. Yeah, that's a real uh, deliberate step in, yeah. in planning your adventure. Yeah. Right. And international travel, you have to execute that, you know, early. We didn't go too early though. It was about a, a month before. I'm like, I guess we're going to Spain. <laughs> and once I did, it was just, it was such a treat to go. Of course, it made me think, why have I waited 20 years? But I know why. Life happens. We had jobs, kids, you know, global financial crisis. Things happen, Liz, <laughs> Julie. Pandemics. Really- yes. <laughs> Pandemics. Pandemics. Like Cancer. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but I really did think of you guys when I was finally like getting to LAX and going, because it's like, Julie and Liz used to do this all the time, like go to Europe for the weekend. <laughs> Liz, that was your job. That was my so job. Like, yes. You were very <laughs> inspiring to me to get me there. And once I got there, it was a, just an unbelievably beautiful trip. It was great to see him there. It was like, you know, to live in someone's home and to see his kids and get to spend time with his husband was great. We went to beautiful museums. We went to a flamenco show. We got on a high speed train and we went to Cordoba for the day. And uh, you know, where they had like, they have, their trains are so nice. They're high, they have high speed trains. They actually have food service on the train, Julie and Liz. They brought us like a hot meal at lunch wow. and at dinner that when we got good. back on the train. It was fantastic. My friend Andrew is a travel writer. So that <laughs> That oh, that means you really the perfect know where person you're going. to travel with. Literally, he is the perfect person to travel with, and um, so I'll put links to some of his stories in the show notes. So that in case you're headed to Spain, he's written for 20 years for the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal on Spain. All I can say is like I'm so glad I did it, and I was proud of myself because I easily could have talked to myself out of it. I bet. You know, I bet. Like, so oh, easy. I don't have time to do I don't this. have time. I'm Hook on up deadline. an excuse. Yeah. yeah. You have COVID. Yeah. So something, right? Yeah. You could have, you could have definitely failed. <laughs> I didn't even think to lie. <laughs> Not no. that people lie about that. I'm just, I'm just saying. Yeah. No. Yeah. Or I could have gotten COVID, but it, it was just a really fantastic trip. And when we got there, we put it all together. I'm like, we have not spent a weekend together, the three of us in 20 years. And I, that oh, was that's just so great. A reminder that time can go by really quickly. Yes. And then, mm-hmm. so it was just, I'm really glad I did it. And I think it was just those ba- basic skills, public transportation. I'm headed in. I'm going to Spain for a long weekend. Fantastic. Good. Well, Leanne, you mentioned it at the top of the show that I wrote an essay in this section of the book entitled, You'll Be Fine, Dear. Um, and that really was um, our mother's mantra when you know, particularly growing up with eight kids, there was a lot of like fierce games going on outside. Like, and, you know, inevitably, you know, somebody would get a dodgeball in their face or something. Yeah. And I remember one time going in with a split lip, you know, from some baseball that hit my face rather than, you know, come over to the plate. And I was really seeking, I was seeking comfort and support from mom. And um, while she did sort of take a look at the lip, uh, she just, she just said, you'll be fine, dear. You'll be fine. (laughs) You know, that was it. That was about as much, um, you know, sort of sympathy and and support that, that I was going to get, you know? Um, And I can remember at other points in my life where I was faced with some new challenge, new adventure, something that seemed hard, whether it was a new school or, you know, when I had a, a new baby, you know, she would always just say the same thing. You'll be fine, dear. Even when I didn't think I was going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Um, But it did, uh, Liz, it always made me sort of stop whining, sort of wash my face, well, wash my face and keep going. Um, Now, I know we all need people in our life to reassure us. That's you want a support, a community around you. But sometimes you also need people who uh, don't really listen. And that's the case. <laughs> when, when I was thinking about this, I was like, was mom really listening to how afraid I was or how much, you know, how I was overwhelmed I was when I had the new baby? Uh, was she was she saying I was going to be okay because she wasn't listening or did she really think I was going to be okay? Um, but, but it didn't really matter in the end. It emboldened you. <laughs> Uh, right. You know, I you think know. I think that's true. And, you know, one of the big adult learnings that I've had for me is um, 
basically nobody cares, you know? I mean, yeah. that is a good, that in many ways is a good thing because people don't care because they have their own things going on in their lives, you know? I mean, it's not like they don't want to care, but they're they're busy. And sometimes you think other people are like, oh, they're going to care so much if you're doing this. No, they don't care. They don't care. So we sort of like, <laughs> you'll be fine. They don't care, but in a good way. I mean, they're right. interested right. in you and supportive of you. But yeah, you're right. They've got their own stuff going on. They're really right. mainly focused on that. Yes. yes. But I think this whole you'll be fine approach uh, to life, to new adventures, new experiences, uh, really made me less in uh, indulgent. You know, it trained me to like, pull myself together. Like, okay, this might be hard, but we're going to do it. And it's, we're going to get through it. And it also uh, really helped me put things in perspective, you know, whether it was a split lip. Yes, I was going to recover from the split lip, you know, and sometimes you think these things just seem overwhelming to us, but they're really not that hard, you know? I mean, so when I had to move to Thailand, uh, that was hard. Okay, it was yes, hard. Yes, that yes, was hard. Or when I had to move to Russia, that was very oh, hard. Oh man, so uh, hard. But what yes. did what did my mother? What did our mother say? Oh, you'll be fine. You'll get there. <laughs> you'll be fine. Okay, and 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 there were things that were difficult. But I mean, I also reflect now as an adult that new hard experiences are going to keep coming at us whether we like it or not. Right. Right. I mean, that's so <laughs> true. That's a really right? interesting thought. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and you Plus, they're to... probably good for us. Yes. I mean, right. they're, that probably keeps us sharp and, and keeps you engaged and keeps you on edge. I think there's nothing wrong with being on edge every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. you'll be... But if you can rise to the challenge of this new adventure, a new experience, always knowing, like in the back of your mind, that you'll be fine, dear. Mm hmm. See? Good one. Yeah. You know, Good. it's funny as you're telling this story, Julie, like I hear both of you when you talk to your children and you often say to your children, I know you'll make the right decision. And Lee, and you often say to your children, <laughs> I believe in you. And <laughs> it's so true. That, aren't they just all versions of the same thing? Like, it's going to yeah. be okay. Yeah, like, go for it. <laughs> it right? is true. That is true. It's the same. That's, that's true. So, yeah. And are you listening when you say that? Maybe. Or maybe you just, but whatever. Anyway, that was funny. It just made me think of, of mom. Um, all right. One other thought about sense of adventure, Leanne, when you were talking about like the, the combo of independence and interdependence, I think we, we did learn that because, well, there were so many of us, usually if you wanted to get a ride somewhere, you had to depend on an older sibling, especially right. because you were the youngest of eight. But, you know, the ability to like get along and go along so you would be included was important. I think I, I talked about that uh, last week. But then, but this reminded me of another thing. When I decided, let's see, I was 30, I was living in New York City. And I was offered a job in Portland, Oregon. And uh, so, you know, I was thinking about it and I was pretty sure I was going to take it. And I called our sister, Monica, who was living in New Orleans at the time. And she With was me. <laughs> That's what she was doing down there. She was a visiting nurse. Yes. But the reason she came there is because I was there. You know, yeah, there we had yeah. a lot of that. Yeah. 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 And Monica was a traveling nurse and had gone to a lot of different cities, you know, like ski season, wanting to be near Lake Tahoe, that kind of thing. Anyway, she had been in New Orleans for a while. And uh, anyway, I called her. We were just, you know, just talking on the phone the way the way you do. And I said, the way people I, used to to actually talk yes. on a phone. Right. Yes. It's true. Yes. So I told her that it looked like I was going to be leaving New York City and moving to Portland. And she was like, huh, you know, I was thinking of going moving to Seattle next. But if you're going to Portland, I'll go to Portland. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, and now Monica is still living in Portland. I've lived in a bunch of other places since, but it was the ability. I didn't need someone to go with me. I would have been fine moving to Portland on my own, but it was so much more fun that Monica and I both moved there at the same time and had very different lives once we got there. Well, first we lived in a motel for a couple of months and then found a place to live. And, but because she was a nurse, you know, she could just like walk into any hospital and get an instant job. Anyway, it's just so funny when I think about that, just the, huh, was going to go to Seattle, but Portland, fine. Okay, I'm in. 
<laughs> so yeah. as was, if they're totally interchangeable too. But no, that's enough. <laughs> See, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, you know, and that was a huge life decision for her. It turns right. out because that's where she ended up staying all of these years. So I just thought that was interesting that she never would have gone there if I wasn't going. And it was great for me that she was coming along with. Uh, so that was just a, an observation. And then one other memorable line about adventures when I was rereading this chapter, Leanne, there is a there is an essay about when we all at the last minute drove up to the Lake Placid Olympics together and it was, there was a lot of drama. Anyway, there's a line in the, in that, that just says, it's easy to talk yourself out of spontaneity. And I think, I think that's super true. And I try to remind myself of that. It's like you going to Spain. Well, not exactly spontaneity is, but imagine how hard it was for mom and dad, knowing that there were eight of us to take everywhere it would have been easy for them to not take us anywhere. <laughs> to, yeah, to go anywhere. To go anywhere, really. <laughs> they embraced their sense of adventure, and I think that's what taught us that we should, too. All right. Stay with us. News about 2024 next. We would like to thank Jenny Kane for their support of Satellite Sisters. Thanks, Jenny. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Jenny Kane is a California brand through and through with staples that make getting dressed easier than ever before. But Liz, let's talk about your go-to holiday sweater that you, you arrived with at my house <laughs> the other day. Tell the folks about your cashmere half zip, Liz. Cashmere half zip in ivory. I bought it. I wore it to your home for Thanksgiving. Yes. I wore it again later Thanksgiving weekend to a Friendsgiving. I'm going to wear it to everything I go to this holiday season. It is, you know, because it's sort of elevated, but simple. Yes. Yes. So cashmere half zip in that color, it's gorgeous and so comfortable, so unbelievably comfortable. So it's great with like fancier pants or just pair, a pair of blue jeans or whatever. So could not be happier, could not be more pleased. You know, it, that's the kind of staples that Jenny Kane's ha has, those things you want to live in every single day. And you're going to mm -hmm. look great every day because it's beautiful, high quality, delicious cardigan in, delicious. in an ever flattering color <laughs> Yes, yes. Of, of ivory. Looked absolutely uh -huh. yeah. great on you. I don't see, you could wear that everywhere, Liz. I'm just yeah. going to say that. Uh, and that's why we love Jenny Kane. And we're so grateful for their support. If you want to gift yourself and your loved ones the best gift of all, it's Jenny Kane. Satellite Sisters listeners get 15% off their first order when you use our code SISTERS at JennyKane.com. That's 15% off your first order, J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E -E at JennyKane.com, code SISTERS. Let getting dressed be one less thing to worry about this holiday. Liz, I'm excited. You know it's going to arrive any minute here at my house? Santa? <laughs> better no. than Santa, Liz. Better than Santa. Better than Santa. What is butcher it? Butcher box. My butcher box, Oh, Liz. my God. Holiday butcher <laughs> box. You're going to be so ready for the season. I am. I mean, this is it. It's delicious, wholesome meals I'm going to be making because mm. butcher box tastes the, takes the guesswork out of finding high quality meat with humanely raised beef, pork, chicken, seafood, and as I mentioned, delivered to my doorstep. Mm -hmm. And after a long, busy day, uh, there's no better feeling than just reaching into that freezer and knowing that I have something that I can trust to make for my family. And guess what I'm getting myself? I just, I have, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pot roast weather here, Liz. So oh, I am excited to have oh, a here in Southern California. That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> no. Pot roast, <laughs> yummy. <laughs> so I, I planned ahead and I cannot wait when that butcher box arrives. I'm going to defrost that pot roast. It's happening this week because the temperature has dipped under 70 degrees. Uh, and so if you want to get the high quality meat, the convenience, uh, you know, the great customer service, here's what you do. You're going to sign up at butcherbox.com slash sisters and use code sisters to get free chicken wings for a year. That's right. That's wow. three pounds of free range organic chicken wings free in every order for a year when you sign up at butcherbox.com slash sisters and use code sisters. Butcherbox.com slash sisters and use code sisters. Thanks, Butcherbox. Liz, Lynn, and Julie, Satellite Sisters, and we're back. 
All right. Uh, Liz and Julie, one of the lists in the book that caught my eye when we were reviewing Uncommon Senses for this series was it's never a perfect time to dot, dot, mm. dot. Mm -hmm. And we we make the case in the book that, you know, you're never really life just is just going to happen whether you want it to or not. And you can't exactly. always count. You can't always calendarize change. Uh, so it's never a perfect time to get married, get divorced, go back to school, have a baby is a classic, quit your job, ask for a raise, take a vacation, talk to your kids about sex and drugs, <laughs> get adult braces. Never a good time. Never a perfect <laughs> time to get adult braces, but sometimes you need them. Clean out your closets, move, get in shape, write a will, go on a blind date or set three new goals for the year. But at Satellite Sisters, we're kind of planners, and uh, we've been thinking about our futures. Yeah, yeah, Lee. And, and, you know, two things we've learned throughout Satellite Sisters history, but especially recently during the pandemic and at the Big Fun Weekend, is how strong and supportive the Satellite Sisterhood is, and how much you enjoy being connected to each other, as well as to us. And as a result, Satellite Sisters is just much more than a podcast. We say that all the time. It's a true community. We get so much pleasure reading what you share with each other in our social areas, watching how you help each other, giving each other all kinds of advice in the Facebook. So much, so it's, much advice. It's mm -hmm. crazy what people ask and what they learn. And also seeing things like the holiday gift exchange that just spontaneously, organically pops up in the community or the local groups you've created on your own to stay connected to each other, having nothing to do with us. It's been great. But we started off this segment by saying that it's never a perfect time to fill in the blank. But in this case, we do think it's the right time to announce that we're going to be making some changes in 2024, and we wanted to share them with you now. First off, this will be our last season of new episodes of Satellite Sisters. We'll be ending the production of new podcasts next week on December 5th, 2023. There'll be news on what's happening in 2024 in a bit. But for now, please know that it has been an amazing run over two decades long, laughs, tears, mediocre advice, <laughs> you know, poor takes on news stories, a lot more laughs. And in every form of the show, from our weekly one hour public radio show to our nationally syndicated daily radio gig to 14 years in our closets, doing what became a pioneering podcast for women, we have loved turning on our mics and talking to each other and talking to you. We are so proud of the show we've created and the conversations we've started. And now we just want to make room for some new adventures in our lives. But first, we want to thank you, our listeners. From the very first show, we never had to explain what a Satellite Sister was. You got it. You wrote to us about your running group, your book club, your college friends. We thank you for being interested in the topics that we were interested in, family, work, relationships, and community. You have demonstrated infinite patience, adaptability as we change networks, platforms, and technologies. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So all the changes all the way through. And over the years of conversation, you became more than listeners. You really became our friends and our community. You provided comfort, rock-solid advice, a gentle and useful feedback, and so much civility to our community. Now, we just love you all, and we love you. You are our friends. Your humor, your intelligence, your empathy, your strength. Ours is a very important relationship that has made our lives so much more special. We hold you close, and we thank you so much. So going back to what I said at the top about the power of the Satellite Sisters community, I want to talk about the things we can all look forward to in 2024, the ways we'll all stay connected even while we're all on our own adventures. So first of all, we will produce 25 episodes of what we're calling Satellite Sisters Rediscovered. And these are episodes from our hidden archives. We've mentioned before that we have some classic material from radio and early podcast days that we've never been able to publish because of like music rights issues and other stuff. So we are going to re-edit those so that we can release a new Satellite Sisters Rediscovered episode uh, every, every two weeks. And, you know, it's so funny. A lot of these episodes 
uh, on our platform, they don't even have show notes. So we no. have to go through them. <laughs> it's going to be a surprise to us what's in them, too. So we are really looking forward to rediscovering the Satellite Sisters in, the, in those early days. But it means you'll be getting 25 episodes that will include some of your favorite segments, including dun, 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 the return of Sheila and Monica <laughs> in Lab Rats and Cozy Couch and other stuff. So we will still be your friends in your ears. And, you know, I don't know about anyone else, but I might even try firing up the mic from time to time and sharing something new with you in the podcast feed. Expect surprises. You know, the feed <laughs> the feed could hold anything. Okay. Yes. That's a good one, Liz. I like it. <laughs> Uh, okay, we're also going to be continuing new content and occasional live drop-ins on all of our social media feeds. So in the Facebook group, on the Facebook page, uh, on the Instagram channel, and on the YouTube channel, as well as on our website, SatelliteSisters.com. So be sure you are following and subscribing to all of these uh, to stay connected. And the links to all those things are always in the show notes, as we say. And, you know, I was thinking, sisters, I might experiment with some new audio and video. I think it's, I think, maybe, I think maybe cooking with Liz, that time has come and gone. I mean, that's a, that's a chapter that I could close, but, you know, I'm just thinking of this new material as what, um, a working title, as we say in Hollywood, that's just called Test Batch. Right? Oh, I like there, it, Liz. There might I be approve. an occasional oh, test I see back. a t-shirt in that. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> One of the things we started during the pandemic that I have really enjoyed doing is uh, pep talk. And so pep talk will continue. It'll be bi-weekly, the same weeks that the, the Satellite Sisters Rediscovered episodes are posted. You're going to get a pep talk. So basically twice a month with the same news, talk, laughs, and links to more good stuff. We'll probably um, put a little bit more news, talk, and laugh links in there too. Uh, also, in the spring, I will be out on a book tour. Um, so I'm not going to be, a, you know, I'm not... I, I'm not going to like um, the South of France and never leaving. No, I'm going to be out working <laughs> plenty, plenty, working plenty in 2020. Hustling, always hustling. Yes. And that uh, the marriage sabbatical will um, come out April 2nd. There are already dates on my calendar for April, including Hello, South Dakota. Yes. I Really? Yeah. I, that will be an adventure land. So sure. excited. Thanks to a couple of satellite sisters who came to the big fun weekend. South Dakota uh, residents, book lovers, and people who used to organize these um, book festival there. I've been invited to the South Dakota Book Festival in September. And okay. so hopefully a lot of other dates will, f will fill in. If not, hello, South Dakota. Um, we do want to that mention- will be an adventure, Leah. Have you ever been to the Dakotas? No, I have not. No, okay. I'm actually That's pretty excited. And uh -huh. I, I don't want to say it, but it's kind of close to Iowa, where I've also never been. So who knows? Uh, okay. I could be doing a little mini tour out there um, in September. Just thinking about that little, even if it's just for me, um, there's some places I'd like to see there. Um, sure. Yeah. And then our sponsors are going to continue to support the 25 Satellite Sisters Rediscovered episodes, which is great. Uh, it allows us to actually re-edit all the shows and put them up and host them on platforms. So we want to thank them for continuing to support us and thank you for continuing to support the sponsors. So we will stay connected to you on Satellite Sisters. Um, and it's interesting, we're doing the Sense of Adventure this week because it did cause all of us, uh, the three of us, to reflect on what an adventure doing the Satellite Sisters show uh, podcast has been. And like when you think about the elements of an adventure, it usually starts with a plan, right? And Liz had the preposterous idea that we should do <laughs> a radio show that sounded like our telephone conversations <laughs> or when we got together. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. That's yeah and look at how that turned out. It was yes. excellent. Yes. It's a very sure. fine idea. The plan itself was sketchy, but the concept was important, Julie. <laughs> yes, it was. And then, like any adventure, things happen. Like somehow, like any we scra scrape together some funds to set this plan in motion. 
And then there was a lot of what I can only describe as serendipity and surprise that that helped to really build momentum with this adventure. We met great people, right? Oh, my gosh. Uh, and so I, many great people. We met yep. so many great people. Uh, we're talking about you, Corny Cole. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> we are talk- we're talking about John McConnell. Yes, sir. Okay. And so many others, you know. And But it was an adventure that pushed us out of our comfort zone. And I laughed when I wrote that because I was like, comfort zone? That would assume that we were like radio talk show hosts before we started this. (laughs) We were not radio talk show hosts before we started the Satellite Sisters radio show. Were we, Liz? No. No, but we were were actual sisters. So we had that going for us. I mean, I feel like we're still out of our comfort zone. (laughs) Every single week. you had done some college radio. Yes, I had. I was a DJ in college. It was very different than this, though, <laughs> what we're what we're doing now. But yeah, I mean, we used to say uh, we're not experts. We're just sisters. But yeah. I do feel like somehow over the last 23 years, we have become experts, really. And in, in, in what in our little corner of the women's mm-hmm. media world. Of so many people around us, yes, I think we got better at what we wanted to do and what we wanted to communicate. And, you know, part of that was our listeners. They helped us uh, really raise our game as well. But we had some setbacks, right? I Mm -hmm. mean, that it wasn't all smooth sailing. (laughs) I mean, I think that was the way showbiz works. But when you think about it over the last two decades that... You know, we all survived 9-11. Liz, yeah. you were way downtown during that. We've had mm-hmm. wars. We just had a global pandemic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've moved several country, uh, countries. Mm-hmm. Liz, you had to move to L.A. Sheila mm-hmm. moved to L.A. Mm-hmm. Then she mm-hmm. moved back to New York. I mean, you know, we've done the show in deluxe studios. Deluxe, right? With yeah. us. Yeah. Catering. Gorgeous. Those catering. Those were the days. Yeah. Catering. <laughs> catering. <laughs> Oh, yeah, when oh, when Miley Cyrus was in the studio next to us, we got to eat our catering. <laughs> it was it was excellent, but we also have done the show in our closets. Um, yes, and sisters have stepped in, stepped out uh, of the show, but without a doubt, this has been an adventure of a lifetime. Yes. <laughs> you know, Julie, we've also we've kept talking. Throughout the death of both of our parents. And, right. you know, and those were very hard episodes to do. So sometimes there were some gaps for a week, but like we always came back to it. And it was always useful to be here and be able to turn on the mics and talk about something. So yeah. we did it. We did yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, we did it. No, and we have we we have loved. I think every minute that we've been behind the microphones. Uh, there's no no doubt about that. And I'm excited for what we're all going to do. Next year and in the future, we're going to tell people about that next week in the sense of direction. <laughs> I think, you know, I will not be going up in, in a rocket. OK, <laughs> and Julie won't be going up in a hot air balloon. So we know that. <laughs> I really haven't figured out what I'm doing, but I have a week. So TikTok, I'm working on it. <laughs> OK, I will say that the best moments of the show or the adventure over 23 years were definitely the moments because we have always done the show not in the same place. I think yeah. people maybe don't understand how little time we've spent together over 23 years doing the show. You know, realistically, given the number of shows we've done, we, you know, we would spend, especially when Julie lived abroad or even during pandemics or various things, we would spend probably less than a week together most years, you know, actually mm-hmm. all in the same room. So the most fun days were just like, remember when we went to Chico's and we got outfitted for the Oprah tour? Like that was <laughs> great. <laughs> I mean, that was so, so fun. Was, so fun. We really had that, like TV meeting with Lisa Kudrow. who was going to. Oh, yeah, was, that was big. Like, oh there was God. good. There was good catering at that place, too. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Everybody else in entertainment has catering. So yes. that's good. We figured that out. We had a couple of those awesome like free trips to Disney World to like oh my god. Oh, yes. Yes. Fantastic. Like the Animal Kingdom Lodge. Those so some of the most fun things were just the behind the scenes stuff that just was indescribable. Indescribable yeah. that we never thought we'd be there. De- you know, definitely pinch me moments. And you're right. It's been the adventure of a lifetime. Adventure of a lifetime. All right. Next week, we are going to tell you where we're headed personally. That's in the sense of direction. And that's next segment. Uh, 
we have a few things we still want to talk about. So stay with us. This holiday season, if you want to give a gift to your loved ones that makes them feel special and unique, just like the relationship we share here at Satellite Sisters, think about giving StoryWorth. StoryWorth is an online service that helps you and your loved ones preserve precious memories and stories for years to come. It's a thoughtful, meaningful gift that connects you to those who matter most. And Julie, I understand you gave StoryWorth to yourself. You Lynn, th this is a brilliant idea for every grandparent, every favorite aunt out there. I am writing the book of Julie, the story of Julie, okay? And I'm going to share it with my grandchildren. Now, Leon, you know I'm not a writer, but with StoryWorth, I can pre-select prompts that are going to be sent to me each week, and then I write them. For example, what is my favorite comfort food? Do you know what it is, Leon? Uh, pot roast. No, no, you don't know. You're going to have to wait till you see the book. Okay, I'm not telling you. Or, or here's another prompt I picked. What was my wedding like? I can't wait to write to uh, about my wedding so that my grandchildren, when they read the book, they'll know all these details that they, they didn't know about. And some of the prompts, and you can certainly tweak the prompts if they're okay. not exactly right, which I think is a great feature. You can upload photographs. Again, a great feature. But some of the prompts are like more insightful. Like what was a small decision that that ended up having a big impact on my life? And so I Ooh. really think about that and really, you know, discover some things about myself as I go through this. But it's easy. You can do it. You If you never thought you could write a book, now you can. You can share these really important memories so that your family, your extended family, can can know about your whole life. Isn't that a wonderful idea? It is a wonderful idea. All right, Julie. And StoryWorth, after a year, they're going to compile all of the stories, the photos, and put them in a beautiful keepsake book that you'll be able to share and revisit for generations to come. And you'll have it done. Good work. I'm proud of you. This is a fantastic idea. With StoryWorth, we're giving those we love the most a thoughtful, personal gift from the heart and preserving their memories and stories for years to come. Go to storyworth.com slash satellite and save $10 on your first purchase. That's storyworth.com slash satellite to save $10 on your first purchase. Storyworth.com slash satellite. Thanks, StoryWorth. Julie, it's the time in Satellite Sisters when we get to talk about our favorite brand of beauty products, and that is Osea. Oh, it's the holiday, and it's approaching faster and faster, but we know what we're giving our people, don't we, Jewel? We're giving them Osea. Leanne, I took a picture of every Osea product I own, which is quite a few, and I sent them to my friends because I was like, you have to get this stuff. I am also ordering extra Andaria Algae body oil because I think that just makes a great gift to give to friends, to neighbors. It's unexpected. It's a yeah. little exotic, but you know it's such a wonderful product, right? Well, Julie, you want to check out Osea's Super Glow Body Set because they Ooh. are taking the guesswork out of gift giving. It's a beautifully put together limited edition box set featuring three of Osea's best selling products. It's the Andaria Algae Body Oil that we love, love, love. Mm -hmm. It's the Andaria Cleansing Body Polish. And then Ooh. you get a travel size Andaria Algae Body Butter. And it's packed in a box so beautiful. Oh. You don't even have to gift wrap, Jewel, because we're not good at that. So it's the, no. I mean, speaking for us, we're not good right. at gift wrapping, but someone else is. So it's the perfect gift for anyone. So there you go. You're set. Yeah, I'm going to buy one for me and one for uh, somebody else. Yeah, that seems that's, uh, that's, that's the, the way, way I roll. It. That's the way you do it. Give the gift of glow this holiday season with clean vegan skincare from Osea. And right now we have a special discount just for Satellite Sisters listeners. Get 10% off your first order site-wide with code SATSISTERS at oseamalibu.com. Osea is spelled O-S-E-A, oseamalibu.com. Head to oseamalibu.com and use code SATSISTERS for 10% off. Thanks, Osea. 
Satellite Sisters and Misters, you know we love our pros, and they're truly custom made-to-order hair care. Switching to a custom routine from pros was one of the best things I've done for my hair. Uh, Liz, what do you think? Is it one of the best things you've done for your hair? Yeah, you know, I uh, I took the quiz. I put in all the info they wanted about me, but I really put the focus on I would like my hair to be shinier. And, you know, it's, I'm not that complicated. I just want shiny hair. And boom, what do I have? I have shinier hair, Leon. So, Pros knows there's more to you than just your hair type, and they've given over 1 million consultations with this in-depth hair quiz. That's how we all got started. So you're answering all kinds of questions so they can really customize that mix for you. You want shiny hair and you live in this zip code and the weather in your zip code is X, Y, and Z? Pros is going to take care of you. We just love our pro shampoo, and now they have a fantastic deal. In time for the end of the year, mm -hmm. if you're thinking part of my, you know, strategy for the new year is to get my hair looking great, you are going to want to listen to this. Custom made-to-order hair care from Pros has your name all over it. Take your free in-depth hair consultation and get 50% off your first subscription order today, plus 15% off and free shipping every subscription order after that. Let me read that again. Yeah, it's going to 50% <laughs> off. That is a super good deal. 5-0. It, it is. 50% off your first subscription order today, plus 15% off and free shipping on every subscription order after that. Go to pros.com slash sisters. That's pros, P-R-O-S-E dot com slash sisters for your free in-depth hair consultation and 50% off your first subscription order. Thanks, pros. As we said, next week's show, the theme is Sense of Direction, uh, and it's our final new show. So we thought, you know, we were going to change the schedule a little bit and move it up. So on next week's show, we're going to be announcing our themes for 2024. So you can look forward to that. I'm also going to post in the Facebook group uh, a thread where you can post your themes for 2024, what you're thinking about, what's important to you. Of course, we still want to hear all of that and carry on that conversation with you. So 2024 themes coming up on Sense of Direction. But now we want to talk a little bit about adventures we'd like to have. You know, that as we think about our lives and what's going on in our lives, uh, what's on our list? And I'm going first because I don't know the answer to this. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's an unusual position for you, Liz. Yes. Thank you, Julie. I know it's a total TBD for me because I don't have any burning desire to travel someplace new or take up some death defying hobby, but I do really need to change it up in a big way. Or as you were saying in the previous segment, Julie, get out of my comfort zone. So mm -hmm. I am working on plans for that. And I'm going to share some of the details on what I'm thinking on next week's Sense of Direction episode. But I just have to, I have to work on my material a little, a little <laughs> bit on that. I don't want to commit to anything that is totally impossible. So that's my <laughs> adventure. J Julie, how about you? You know, when I think about adventures, particularly at this time of year when there's a lot of gift giving, uh, I think adventure is what I want to give to all five of my grandchildren, that I want to have experiences together with them to show them a bigger world, whether it's a trip or even, you know, a visit to a library, a museum or con a concert. I want them to be adventurous, not too adventurous, but not that that make me nervous. But I think, you know, I think it's, a, you know, so as I think about gifts for my grandchildren, you know, I want to, I am planning things that are more experiences rather than things, you know, because I feel like it will bring us closer together, but more importantly, it provides them with such a great foundation about, you know, ab about adventure and about embracing change, embracing getting out of their comfort zone and doing new and different things because that will help them throughout their life. So that's the first thing. 
The other adventure um, that, uh, you know, I want to do more of um, in 2024 is more time with my brothers and sisters, okay? Uh, we did the family reunion this year. Now, you two may be shocked. You know, Leanne was just saying in the last segment that we really don't spend that much time together. Well, sister, <laughs> you better get that guest room ready because I'm coming to California, okay? okay? All right, All right, that'll be fun. All right. Well, you're saying now, Liz, but you may be you may be regretting it. Home. But sure, come on over. Because <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing next year, but okay, that sounds you know, good. Yeah, but any if anything this year has told us is like time, life is precious. Yes. And, yeah. And to to be around loved ones is is you to make the time for that is really important. And I include in that group of loved ones uh, my lifelong friends. So uh, get ready, people. My bags are packed. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Mine is also vague like Liz's because I'm trying to think of something new I can do with my husband. And please don't say pickleball. Okay. Because we are, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Uh, I feel like we, need something to do together, like a new activity or a focus. Uh -huh. I mean, that gets us a out of the house. We need to get out of our house. I mean, we spend a lot of time in our house and then we spend a lot of time in our yard. And <laughs> well, that's why your garden is so beautiful and your new trellis and everything. It's really paid off for you, Leanne. It you has paid off. Spend so much time in your backyard. It has paid off, but I feel like we, we're we at a point in our life where we need to make some new social connections, and that's probably not going to happen in our backyard. So, uh, <laughs> so, you know, maybe it's, I mean, if, if he was musical, I would say we should join, like, community theater. Like, that's yeah. the kind of thing I'm, I'm looking oh. for. So, something like you, that. You I, and your husband in community theater. <laughs> Whoa. But that's see, something. He, He's not musical, so that won't be happening. Yeah. Maybe there's a volunteer organization that we exactly. can join together, although mm -hmm. he's not really a volunteer. So, uh, but we're going to find something that we can do together that A, gets us out of the house, B, helps us to meet new people, enriches yeah. our social circle. I think those would all be good. It'll probably be, he does like music, even though he can't perform music. So I don't know, maybe, maybe there's some like... Maybe we can travel with, I don't know, like people used to travel with the dead. Maybe we can find a band to travel with. I don't know. I don't know, you guys. But <laughs> that sounds fun. That yeah. sounds fun. Get okay. out of your comfort zone, man. Yeah. We need something to do. All right. Together. Just get yourself a plan. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> but maintain the spontaneity. That's yes. The, that's the yes. tough combo. Yeah. That okay. is the, the, yes, that is it. Uh, all right. That is the end of our show for today. You know, we have been very lucky to have worked with such a talented group of professionals over the last 23 years in all kinds of industries, you know, from, from radio to podcasting to publishing to magazine writing uh, to speaking. Speaking, we we have really enjoyed all those pieces of Satellite Sisters. Uh, people that we've worked with have made us better and made the show better, and we're so grateful for their contributions. Two of those people, Sergio Enriquez, who will be sticking around and doing some editing for us. Thank you, Sergio. Uh, okay. We've been so grateful to your con for your contributions to the show, and we look forward to working with you more. Emily Borogine is our graphic designer, and um, she was pretty sad. So, Emily, don't worry. We're going to have some assignments for you, Emily. Stay tuned. Stay Definitely. tuned, Emily. I can move you into the merch department, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> but Liz opens her pop-up shop next year. <laughs> Anything could happen. I said, expect the unexpected. <laughs> All right. A big thanks to our sponsors. Uh, they have supported the show and really made it possible for us to do uh, to do what we do for the last bunch of years. A big thanks to you for supporting those sponsors. It's an important loop, and we appreciate um, you supporting their their products. Um, our to do list today is kind of special. We're going back. We're going back to a piece in uncommon senses. Liz, I'll let you set it up. Oh yeah, this one really made me laugh, Lee. And so in uncommon senses, we have a piece called ruts, where we talk about individually all the ruts that we are in. And so we define ruts this way. Here's what it says in the book. Everyone gets into ruts, except for our sister, Sheila, who claims to reinvent herself every day. She has habits, she argues, but not ruts. What's the difference? A habit is a semi-conscious choice. A rut is a lazy choice. Ooh. Okay, so sisters, I'm going to ask you about the ruts that are in the book and if you're still in them and see if you can generate 
a rut related to do. <laughs> okay. That's not okay. easy. Okay. Not easy to say. <laughs> okay. A rut related. Um, okay, Leon. This made me laugh. You're such a trendsetter. Listeners know that you practically invented cheese boarding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but here, yes. here's another thing that you brought back. Your rut in the book says cottage cheese, three meals a day. <laughs> and I just want to point out like how trendy cottage cheese is now. Cottage cheese is back. You brought it back. <laughs> thank, thank you. I mean, tw- that was 20 years ago. I just have <laughs> always been a fan of cottage cheese. Big yeah. fan. Okay. So do you have a rut related to do? Um, all right. So I know one of the other ruts in the book was that I just was having struggling to get out of my sweatpants and, uh, you know, leisure wear. So again, mm-hmm. trend setting, trend setting. And I have to say, I have not done that well on that. <laughs> I think, I mean, there were days when I had to leave the house, you know, when we went to the studio, I, I wore yeah. real clothes. And when I go out to do speaking gigs, I wear real clothes, but for, but for the most part, I don't wear them any real clothes anymore. And, um, I did have a moment like two weeks ago where I looked at myself in the mirror and I thought, what am I doing here? I need to put on some real clothes during the day. I need Mm -hmm. to get out of these, you know, stretched out yoga pants. So I have consciously bought some new items, pieces that are comfortable, but look and look and feel like real clothes, Liz, that look like hard pants, you know, pants with zip. (laughs) Yes, this this is an admirable goal (laughs) you're working on. It's radical. It's yeah. radical. So the other day I was, my husband came home at like six and I was in some real clothes and he said, oh, are you going somewhere? I was like, no, no, this is it. I'm, I'm wearing clothes like this now. <laughs> well, it's hard in California because nobody's <laughs> wearing real clothes. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Good luck with that. Thank you. Uh, okay. Julie, in the book, this is a funny one. You wrote, owns many pairs of earrings, wears the same pair every day. So yep. just wondering, yep. how's, that, yep. how's that going for you? Well, you know, I, I reread that. I laughed. I was like, I'm still in that rut. So I, I just expect big things from my ears going forward. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I am going to address this. There's going to be a lot of act- ear action in 2024. Um, I, I'm breaking up with this rut. Okay. okay. All right. We want to take you Rick- 20 years, but you're really committing now. <laughs> Good. I think you, we're going to hold you to post uh, like uh, photos in the Facebook group. Every, every time you change your okay. earrings, like okay. once a month. I got some earrings. I got some good ones. <laughs> okay. All right. And for me, I, yeah. I, uh, I wrote that, um, that I wore black pants and black shoes every day for the last decade. And that was my ride. But I would like to point out that that is, that's now called a capsule wardrobe. So I think I was, <laughs> I think I was way ahead of the curve on that one. And uh, I also listed balsamic vinegar as my condiment of choice. And obviously that will never change. I have no desire to change that. So the rut I'm in now that I want to get out of is this. Too much texting instead of calling. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, Texting yeah. is an easy thing. You want you want to stay connected. I mean, and it's great. We have recommended this on Satellite Sisters a lot. If right. you can't do anything else, at least send a little text. Yeah. But I think the more ambitious goal for me is to do more actual calling. Never mind. Julie's doing all the face to face work, traveling around. <laughs> but just like, I mean, I'll be I'll be looking forward to these phone calls, Liz. This is going to be great. I hope I'm on the list. If you don't call me, I'm going to really feel badly. Well, I assume we're just keeping our weekly production call on this on the calendar, and we'll just check in on other things. But anyway, so. Uh, so my goal for the year, uh, the ride I want to get out of is texting instead of calling. So I want to do more calling, which, of course, brings us back to the most fundamental thing of all that we always say, which is call your satellite sister. That's right. Sisters, have a great week. Listeners, thank you so much. There's uh, more information on the blog. If you want, head over to SatelliteSisters.com. And don't forget, call your satellite sister. <laughs>